Hey guys, I have a very special lens to show you today. This is the Panasonic Leica 12mm f1.4 Sumalux Prime Lens for Micro Four Thirds. This is the flagship ultra-wide fast lens for the system. With a price to match, this lens is $1,300, although I was able to get it for $1,000 uh, from a coupon I had for B&H. Uh, just top quality lens. In this review, I'm going to talk about the, the build quality, the image quality, but there's kind of an overarching theme to this review, and it's, it's that now that our top micro four-thirds bodies like the G9 and the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II are capable of six and a half stops of stabilization, do you really need the 1.4 or can you go without it? And I, I made this, here are my notes by the way, here's a summary for this whole review basically. I'm going to go over these usage cases where it's pretty much essential to have a good fast aperture like 1.4 and then some situations where you can probably get by with the 2.8 if it's a good quality 2.8 like the Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 millimeter f 2.8 to f4 which I also have for my G9. The first usage case where f1.4 is definitely beneficial and something you want is video, particularly low light video or indoor video. Video is a situation where image stabilization has no bearing on your exposure whatsoever. You're pretty much limited by the shutter speed in your ISO. So it really helps to have a nice fast aperture in order to keep that ISO down. Here I'm using ISO 3200 on my G9. It looks pretty clean, but if I were using an f2 or an f2.8 lens, I'd have to use 6400 or 12800. Uh, you want to see what 12800 looks like? One second. This is ISO 12800, and this is also an f2.8. This is basically showing you what you would see if you're using that uh, that 12 to 60 zoom lens. So you can see it's quite a bit messier and this is definitely a situation where it would pay off to go ahead and get that 1.4 lens to keep your ISOs down to a tolerable noise level shooting very low light videos with the G9 or really any micro four thirds camera except for the GH5S. The GH5S has pretty good low light video but again it, it always helps to have a faster aperture to play with if you want to. In more manageable light environments, you can see it still has a nice effect, keeping the ISOs nice and low. It throws out the background a little bit, having that 1.4. Uh, if I go to 2.8 to kind of emulate the zoom lens, uh, I mean, it's, it's not bad. You can, it's a little bit blurred, but 1.4 gives you just a little bit extra isolation. I like it. The second usage case where f1.4 is absolutely essential is astrophotography. Now, astrophotography, the name of the game for these kinds of Milky Way shots is fast and wide. You're not going to get a great shot with an f2.8 lens unless you're like on a full frame system that can kick out pretty clean ISO 3200, 6400, because that's where you're going to be shooting at for typical wide angle Milky Way shots. With a 24 millimeter equivalent lens like this, this 12 millimeter for micro four thirds, you're not going to want to go over about 20 seconds before the stars start shifting too much and it blurs out your Milky Way. So for a 20 second exposure with my f2.8 zoom I had to use ISO 6400 and that's really noisy. You can see this shot here I took with my zoom even on my Instagram channel where you're just viewing it on a phone screen even on that tiny little screen you can see all the noise. Oh, by the way my Instagram is dwarnicky11 I'm linking it right here uh, please add me. You'll see content well before I do any reviews. I mean, what I do here is just like a small part of, of my hobby and my, my passion for photography. Uh, so check out my Instagram. But anyways, yeah, I mean, the ability to knock your ISO down by two stops is a pretty big deal. It makes the difference between a noisy mess and something you can actually print. So that, coupled with the fact that this lens has very strong cross-frame performance at f1.4, make it a great choice for stars in astrophotography. You're going to get pretty clean corners with this lens, uh, negligible coma, which is that smearing you see on the stars towards the corners. It's pretty well controlled with this lens. Chromatic aberration is well controlled. It's really all things considered, this and the Leoa 7.5 millimeter f2 are probably the best lenses for the system in terms of astrophotography. The third usage case that I'm going to discuss in favor of this lens is low light motion. Now you can get away with low light stills with an f2.8 lens with the stabilization on the G9, but any kind of motion where you just have to have that shutter speed fast enough to stop motion 
there's no way around it. You got to have a faster lens. You got to have 1.4. So it's not something I really do a lot of, but it's good to have if I need it. For my cases, it's more about the video and it's more about the astrophotography. We've had some really cloudy, gross weather this summer, which is the best time to get a Milky Way shot. So I haven't been able to use this lens yet for a Milky Way shot, but I really hope to be able to get something in before we get into the uh, winter skies that you, you don't see the, the core at night in the winter, here in Virginia at least. Okay, now I'm going to go into the three usage cases where it's probably better to pass on this lens and maybe stay with your zoom lens or stay with an f2.8 lens. And the first is low light stills. Now when I first got my G9, I had the 12 to 60 millimeter f2.8 to f4, a dual IS2, great stabilization, works with the G9. And I, I walked around Harper's Ferry at night taking pictures of these historic buildings. I was able to bang off these three, four, and even five second shots at ISO 100, 200, maybe 400, some of them pretty reliably, so I didn't really need that super fast aperture, and that's that's really a sign of the times. It's, it's really showing how powerful the stabilization is in these cameras so you can fairly reliably hold two, three, four second shots like this. So if I'm taking pictures of, of buildings and things at night that aren't moving and I can hold still for a few seconds, it's not really a problem to stick with the f2.8 lens. Now the second usage case where it's probably not advantageous to upgrade to this lens is the image quality versus a comparable high image quality zoom like the Panasonic Leica 12-60 f2.8 f4. Shooting both of these lenses side by side at 12 millimeters, I could detect a slight difference in favor of the prime, mainly in the corners, but it was so negligible. It's like I, I had to flip back and forth like four times and check each corner. Oh, this one, you know, the prime's just a little bit sharper. It's, it's not a big deal. These are both Panasonic Leica lenses. They have excellent color and contrast, um, great sharpness across the frame. So if you're, if you're going to go with the Prime because you want you know, a, a better, sharper image, they're both going to be great for that. Um, it is great that it holds it together so well at 1.4. Um, if you're comparing them at 2.8, it will be sharper. But again, it's, it's not a night and day difference. It's not a reason to really buy this lens over the zoom. The image quality on both really, really is pretty strong. Okay, the last thing is subject isolation. Now, in vlogging, it, it kind of gives me a more atmospheric effect to have the 1.4 versus the 2.8, but just in general still shooting. Okay, here's, here's a shot of my new 42.5, my delicious new 42.5 millimeter f1.2. I just got this lens about five days ago, and it, it is, wow, it's, it's everything they say it is, and I, I, I really hope to, to both keep it around for a long time and make some good money with it. I'll get more into that when I, when I do my full review. I'd like to get some more samples under my belt. I digress again. Um, you can see it throws out the tomatoes pretty well. You stop down to 2.8. It, it's, it's a little bit better, and you can see the, vin, the vignetting. Uh, reduces a little bit, you get a, a brighter across the frame shot. But um, in general, it's it's not a dramatic difference. And here here I am walking up to my car, and this is just a quick little built-in um, walking with IBIS test. This lens does not have its own stabilization. It's relying only on the IBIS on the G9. You can see it does a pretty good job. So walking up to my car, and here I am taking a shot at 1.4, and again at 2.8. And you know, side by side, it, you cannot tell a big difference. It's it's pretty minimal, and this is, it's part of it is the the sensor size being smaller, and part of it is just the focal length being so wide. This is not the focal length to throw subjects out of focus. And with Micro Four Thirds 1.4 versus 2.8, you're not going to have a dramatic difference between those two in terms of subject isolation and in general general shooting situations. So this has been my case for and against getting this lens. Um, like I said, primarily I got it for low light video and definitely astrophotography. That's a big passion of mine. It's just, it's very temperamental, the weather. I mean, the stars have to align really for astrophotography to work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing what you can do with an f1.4 aperture and 6.5 stops of hand-holding capability of stabilization like this shot here of the moon coming out through the clouds ISO 400 two and a half seconds 1.4 so clean and I mean you would not even imagine taking a shot like this handheld just a few years ago and 
definitely not on a small, smaller sensor size like Micro Four Thirds, but with this lens and the G9, stuff like this is possible. And you get a lot of comments from people who shoot full frame asking you like, oh, what do you got there, a D750? Oh no, it's actually a Micro Four Thirds. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this review. It's kind of a tricky review to do because I'm, I'm giving a case for and against the lens. I always try to be very honest in my channel. Nothing I get is sponsored. Panasonic sends me nothing. They don't know who I am. All this stuff comes out of my own pocket, which is why I always try to find a good deal on this stuff. Um, but I hope this was helpful for you. If you're on the fence about this lens, I would just say think about these usage cases. Think about your low light motion, think about do you really do video, do you do astrophotography, or if you just want a lens for shooting in low light, stuff that isn't moving a lot, you're, you're probably okay with your, your 2.8 to f4 zoom lens. That's, that's my opinion. Anyways, as always, thank you for watching. Appreciate a thumbs up and a comment below. Thank you.